reading spy dolls. I'm gonna do this every once in a while. I'm gonna read a random book. I'm not gonna read the whole thing, so it'll be like multiple parts. Yeah, reading spy dolls like you can see on the screen, the very old floor. one. So let's get into this. Chapter one: A brush with death. The man with the gun was prowling nearby. Lara couldn't see him, but she could smell him. She still had the taste of the flesh in her mouth. She crouched, absolutely still, half hidden in the underground. In the undergrowth, a twig cracked underfoot. Where are you, dog? He cursed. I have a little something for you. Yes, and that little something is a bullet. Lara thought as she adjusted her position in reading this to leap at the man. He came into view, the gun held out in front of him, walking carefully associate, occasionally turning round full circle. His clothes were torn, his arms were scratched and his legs were bleeding badly. Souvenirs of his encounter with the dog had now been wait. Souvenirs of his encounter with the dog he was now determined to shoot. Lara remained still, controlling her breathing and the urge to run. The man came closer. He must have seen her. It would only matter it was only a matter of time. Wait for the right moment and I might live to fight another day. Now just a couple of meters away. She could see barely bar she could see the barrel of the gun. She could smell that it recently had been had been used. It's now or never. Go! Lara leapt from her hiding place, surprising the man and sinking her teeth into his arm. He yelled in pain and dropped the weapon. The dog, the dog sprinted away. I must get out of his, of this wood. Just run and don't look back. She couldn't see the man, but obviously he had found his gun. She heard a shot. A bullet thudded into a nearby tree. She ran faster, zigzagging out of the way as more shots were fired. An empty coke jumped high into the air as a stray bullet hit it. The noise was enough to wake her. Laura leapt to her feet. At, the, at first she wasn't sure where she was. There was no wood, no undergrowth in the gun. Instead there was a concrete floor, a water bowl and some iron bars. She really recovered her senses. Laura was in the safety of the RSP, the RSPCA. She had been dreaming of her brush with death five days ago. The waiting came. Lara had spent the last five days studying ordinary dogs. She'd resisted the temptation to choose just any old owner. Although the prospect of a quick escape from the RSPCA was almost overwhelming. She was following orders. I must choose a family. Be patient. I will know when the right when the right owners come along. Lara noticed that the pretty dogs with the good manners tended to see only a few hours, whereas the ugly ones with Griff Bark stayed a lot longer. In fact, some she had spoken to had been in their cages for months. A bit of shame for that humans choose according to looks, he thought. Maybe I can help one of the long-serving dogs get adopted. She decided to help Bruce in cell 34. He had been caged for nearly six months and La Lara noticed for that his size and his energy put off a lot of p potential owners. Even worse, got so excited when people came around that he jumped up at the bars and howled like a wolf. Yet when nobody was around, Bruce was the nicest, softest dog on the row. At exercise time, Laura took him to one side. Look here, Bruce, she barked. Have you ever considered why you have been here for six months? Bruce wasn't the bite brightest. He hadn't really considered very much at all. Only that he was desperate to have a family and that he and that the more he tried, the worse it got. Laura got coached. Lara had coached him in basic relaxation and manners. The very next day, she was delighted to see him taking deep breaths and composing himself as a lady approached his cage. 
Good lad, Brucey, he thought. No barking or jumping up. Keep it cool. Then as per, and then as per the plan, we'll stay down and rolled over a tummy to, for a tummy to go. And now I walked through the lady we stopped at the cave 34 and patted his belly. Lara knew that Bruce was fighting his urge to bounce and howl. She was willing Come on. Fight the urge, lad. Stay strong, she thought. Sad, sad eyes, Bruce. Do your sad eyes. Like we practiced. Right on cue, Bruce got his feet and sat before the lady, offering his paw through the bars. He did his sad eyes just as they'd rehearsed, and Lara saw ladies, the lady's face break into a pitying smile. Lara punched the air in delight as the lady asked for case 34 to be opened. No bouncing. Take some deep breaths, Brucey, he thought. Don't blow your chance now. Remember the final move. At exactly the right moment, Bruce handed a big wet lick across the lady's face and sealed his dump. Adom Lara led the howl of delight as Bruce was led away, bouncing with excitement. Thanks for the advice, Lara, he barked. I owe you one. See you on the outside. Bruce just departure left 53 dogs at the RSPCA. Lara was staggered at the variety in officer. On officer, cute and cuddly, large with the smelly short hair, long eared, pedigrees, mongrels, sleek and beautiful, fat and ugly puppies. Fully grown dogs, some smile and some sad, but all with one thing in common. They longed for a loving home. The Cook family pulled up outside the RSPCA. That's all I can read for now. Okay guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.